welcome to my channel, AV Make It Artwork, where we do what we do to make that artwork for you. And I'd like to welcome you to Log Day 24 of the Sketchbook Slam Challenge in Inktober. And if you're new to this channel, new to this series, this has been a daily blog update series of my 20 page progress throughout the Sketchbook Slam Challenge and some of my Inktober work. And if you'd like to, maybe hit that subscribe button, join the AV Creative Crew. We do art stuff and keep it sketchy. That being said, let's get into the tour for day 24. So I started off my day thinking I've got to catch up on some of these prompts for the official Inktober list. And this was my result for Juicy. And initially I wanted to call it Juicy Trail, but then I was like, ooh, that doesn't sound too good. And I didn't know how to combine some of the prompts. So I'm still playing catch up with prompts, but I decided that I wanted to draw an Oni kind of inspired demon thing, eating from, like eating this fruit from this tree. If you ever watched Inuyasha, you probably remember the one episode where there was a tree that would, um, that was nourished by people, I think, and then the fruits would be made from their, from those people, and demons would eat it for power. So it's loosely based off of that man-eating tree. So <laughs> that's as much as I have for this guy. But I think he came out pretty cool looking. Did it with some microns in red and black. Um, this is like a practice sketch of the one witch. Oh gosh, I forget her name. I'll probably pop it up on the screen real quick. Um, from American Horror Story Coven, who got blinded with acid, and I kind of want to try to do a drawing of her, maybe a close-up on her eyes for blind. And this is like a first attempt at trying to draw her, which <laughs> I wrote out, first attempts are always ugly. Random dude with a fence. It was fun. It was fun. Then I started drawing these piggies, these random piggies, and I decided that I need to catch up on Lana J prompts because one, I wanted to have some animal studies to broaden my art repertoire, make that whole <laughs> just make my tool belt a little fuller. So we have Moth and Bleeding Heart, Greyhound and Buttercup, which oddly enough, I mistake Buttercup and, not the poppy, Car not Carnation. There's some other flower that I mistake Buttercup for much more often. Uh, daffodil. I think daffodils when I see Buttercup, which I was really surprised, but this was Greyhound and Buttercup, and I'm considering drawing witches with their familiars and the flowers because I kind of want to integrate that, like them actually being practical familiars. This one's Swan California Poppy, which California poppies are rather pretty. They're pretty much yellow poppies with a bit of orange to them. And I don't know, I think it was a really nice color scheme to play around with. Sorry if you hear some uh, hedge trimming in the background. I think there's landscapers today. <laughs> but yeah, uh, some of the swans were really fun to draw. It was nice using the blue with the red. I really just love how this one came out because this one was from Imagination. And here's Tiger and Carnation. I decided I am not going to take forever to do all the stripes on these darn tigers. So I just did physical studies and one close-up study of the face to kind of understand the striping. 
Incarnation isn't something that's like new to me. It's something I've drawn in the past and have a set way of drawing. So these weren't from any set references, but I think there's something about the color orange that's like flamboyance. It has a particular meaning in the language of carnations. And then we have goats. And I think I had a page once that was like, toots my goats, look at my goats, bro. And we have little daffodils, which again, I think of buttercups when I see a daffodil. And I think that's because of, oh, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory? Like, yeah, Charlie and Willy Wonka's Chocolate Factory. And the part where they eat the, the sugary, candy flowers and they say buttercups I was like oh that's probably where I get that misdirection then I kind of randomly made horse-esque looking demon creatures and this is more like a goat because I was still on that goat train then I was playing around with building different profiles for the face uh, somewhat inspired by how to draw shoujo fashion, which is like boys fashion. Then we got this dude, this creepy stitched up dude. We were pretty fun. I don't know. I was in some mood. I was in a mood for some creepy stuff, like these big silhouetted people that have no faces to them, and this stitched up dude. And then I drew a bedroom. It was really late in the day, late in the evening. Because my husband and I, my husband actually had to come home early due to storm warnings for our area. Well, possible storm warnings, so on the ship it's like, okay, uh, if there's a possible storm, we're just going to have everyone go home. So we went out for a bit, so this is late in the evening. And, ah, dang it. And... This has a speed draw and a little bit of story. Um, it's no one particular instance, but I'll be explaining that better with the story of the presence. Alrighty, so this story has to deal with not one particular instance, but a series of instances that I would experience um, just about every day. And this would happen throughout my childhood as I was growing into adolescence through my pubescent phase. So I want to give a rough timeline of from when I was 5 to 14 to 16, just about. And the thing with the story is this presence was always a sensation I would get if I would try to lay down by myself or go to bed by myself. And with these times I would try to lay down or go to bed, I would feel this odd sensation as though someone was pressed against my back. And it was always weird. And when I was younger, I was scared to look behind me because I figured I would see something. And I didn't want to see what was there. And so there was this odd pressure as though someone had climbed into the bed and was laying nestled against me. And like I said, it would happen every night that I would try to go to bed by myself. And it really started to peter out as I began to go into my pubescence and discover physical intimacy. And I always thought that was like a weird correlation between the distancing of this presence and like the frequency frequency of which this would occur. And it wasn't. Like, it never felt bad, and I never saw anything, but I would just always feel as though there was 
just someone right there, right behind me, in the bed with me. So they were spooned right behind me. And I'm kind of curious if anyone else has had, like, an experience where they felt their own sort of presence right behind them. Maybe give, like, a shout-out in the comment section. And I know this is kind of, like, a weird story um, to really listen to as well as tell. And I'm thinking that tomorrow I'll probably focus on another one of my mom's stories. Because she did give me a couple more that she gave me the green light to tell. Or I might tell of a creepy encounter that my husband had. Which he recently told me about. And I'll see if I can get the green light for that. So if you would like to hear those stories. Just leave a little yeah in the comment section down below. And if you want to stick around for more spooky, creepy, sketchy content, hit that subscribe button. And if you've got your own spooky stories that you want me to share, uh, maybe send them to me in an email at the Gmail I pin in the top comment in the comment section down below. And if you're curious as to drawings as I'm doing them, I try to post on my Instagram on the daily. So... Maybe follow me on Instagram as well, which that link will be provided in the pinned comment in the comment section as well. As for that, I hope that you are having a safe and spooky October thus far, that all of your challenges are going well with OCtober, Drawtober, and Inktober, and that you guys are making sure that you do what you do to make that artwork for you. Keep it safe, my spooks. Have a wonderful day. Lots of love. Bye.